I start off with a light sketch on a piece of heavy duty mixed media paper. It's usually Strathmore 500 series mixed media paper and I prefer the 11 by 14 size. But I just lightly sketch the drawing onto the paper where you can't really see the pencil marks too well because it will show up even if, with opaque layers of colored pencil, uh, graphite still shows up through them. So you don't want to have, I don't want to have um, pencil marks in my, um, in my finished drawings. This is the longest, most tedious part of this whole video is doing this background because as you're going to, to see as we go along, I use many layers of colored pencil and even mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits on them. And, um, and so, so many layers and, and lots of color and lots of blending and, um, then re-adding color it's, it's, a, it's quite a process. It is time, very time consuming. Um, I recorded this over several days um, and it took probably, I don't know, seven hours maybe to do this piece. Um, I have it sped up to 32 times speed. So that's pretty fast. And this video is still what, uh, almost 12 minutes long just just this part is um you know the, the the actual rendering of the drawing is 12 minutes long that's that's a that's, you know that's 30 times 32 times sped up so as you can see i'm just still adding layers that's the name of the game with colored pencils is do your layers layer and layer and layer you have to be patient with it you have to be willing to sit there and add these colors over and over even if it feels like you've already done something, you sometimes have to do it again just to get the colors you want to look right. I really like that purple that's using right now. That's um, That was a really nice color. Okay, so this is where I'm using the odorless mineral spirits on a Q-tip. I found that Q-tips apply the spirits best um, and don't remove too awful much of the colored pencils pigment. Whereas when I was using a um, paintbrush, it seemed to just be brushing all the color off with it. And so I think maybe the, the compact round head of the Q-tip is just a little bit better of an implement. I've seen people use blending stumps or tortillions to do this. But when I tried to do it, I didn't have good results with it. Uh, maybe my tortillion was just too pointy or something and I needed something more dull. I, I do find like that the, the dullness of the uh, Q-tip really helps. So now after that, I had to wait for it to completely dry. And now I'm going in with my last layer on the background of colored pencils. This just completely solidifies the color and gets rid of any remaining um, little pieces of the paper showing through a grain of the paper. I don't like my colored pencil drawings to have um, the paper grain showing through. I like them to be very opaque. So we're almost getting done with this background here. It's not too much longer. This really is the longest, most tedious part of this video. Although I suppose it could seem tedious to anybody who's not into doing art. <laughs> doing all this over and over and over again on one drawing. But it's worth it. I think it has a really nice effect when it's done. I've had people say it looks like gouache paint. And that's cool. I've been kind of messing around with gouache paint lately and I am no painter. Um, but I just love it. It's opaque and it's matte. One thing about colored pencils, um, even the nice ones, even the, the luminance do a little bit, not as much, but a little bit of the wax bloom, which you can take off with a tissue when you're done with your picture, but it makes it shiny and I don't really like the shiny look. And here I'm getting to work down into the details now. I'm done with that background. Thank goodness. Now I get to all the fun parts of the drawing where all the details are. This is this is the part I really enjoy. Like you have to get through the work of like the background or large areas of that you have to cover. But uh, then once you get to get to work on the the uh, details, it all it's all worthwhile. Um, yeah, this this picture does have a ton of pink and purple in it, um, which I kind of like. I've always had a thing for pink when I was a little girl. My parents would always put, um, we, we moved a lot because so my dad was in the Air Force, but my parents would put pink carpet in my bedroom. And I always loved having my pink carpeted bedroom. So 
But this is an awful lot of pink. <laughs> and using a little lighter color for a little highlights in there just to kind of give it a little more realistic look. Although I'm not really going for realism, but I just like to kind of make, you know, I want the pillows to look a little poofy. I just want it to have a quality that's, you know, sort of bordering on realism, but with the colors being so off, it's not quite realism. It's like color is my favorite thing to play with. I mean, I guess compositionally I'm a little boring and, and subject matter, maybe I'm a little boring, but I think I can get in there even when I'm doing it just a, a traditionally colored drawing like like a portrait of a person in regular portrait colors I still tend to use a lot of colors so um, and I and I always try to make the background something striking in some way if I have a portrait so that um, it sets the portrait off here I'm going in with a really heavy hand and really pressing that colored pencil deep into the paper. I'm not using odorless mineral spirits for this portion. I'm just using the strength of my hand to shove that colored pencil down into the grain of the paper. It's um, it really does take work. It's it's not you really press. You end up really pressing down. That's why I have to take one of the reasons I have to take breaks. So my hands start to hurt. I don't want to end up with you know, carpal tunnel or some crazy thing. But I am pressing quite hard on these pencils. The the uh, the bright pink color for the background. I with this drawing, I I used it down to a little nub. Like it's just a little nubbin of a pencil now that I have to stick in a pencil holder. You can see I used my uh, electric eraser there for a second. There was some lines of pencil that were just a little too dark. But now we get into my favorite part is rendering the figures. This is the part I find so fun. Um, getting to do all the folds of the cloth and you know the hints at their faces, the hints that they're holding hands. Yeah, I, I, li I like this. This is my favorite part of doing this drawing right here. Just really getting in here and now it's starting. It's starting to shape up. It's starting to look like something now. nice blue. My grandma had uh, beds like this, old iron beds. As a matter of fact, I would spend the night with her and the one I slept in had a mattress, I'm not kidding, from the 1930s. Here it is the 1970s and I'm sleeping on this mattress from the 1930s. <laughs> but I don't know, it didn't stink or anything. It kind of smelled good like grandma's house, you know? Um, so I really like beds like that. I think they're really cute. And I think that it just, the, the blue of the bed just sort of sets it all off. There kind of frames the figures in the middle nicely. Little, little hints of, a, of a highlights in there just to give it a little more dimension. I was noticing it just looked flat. It didn't really look like a bed. It just looked like lines there. So adding that little bit of, uh, of highlight gives it that kind of 3D, you know, three-dimensional look. The figure on the left is in yellow and the figure on the right is in orange, although not in the original picture. In the original picture, they were like a white robe and a light pink robe or something or yellow, you know, pale yellow and like a really pale yellow and, and a green or I don't know. They were different colors, but I, I like the yellow and the orange very much, especially putting the, um, the red and pink highlights into it here in a minute. I also use a color I just adore in a little bit. Um, it's a neon pink, but I ran into problems with the neon pink. It has, it was a prism color, so it should have been buttery soft, but I noticed that all the quote unquote neon colors all are kind of gritty when you go to use them, grainy feeling, and they don't lay down as smoothly and, and prettily as the other Prismacolors do. They're just not as buttery and nice. I mean, they get the job done. Uh, here we go. This, this is the color I'm talking about, this really bright pink. Which you can see when I do the first layer, it's very blotchy. It's very inconsistent. So once again, I'll have to go in and, you know, use a firm hand and burnish that. But um, getting to work on all the little folds in the clothing is kind of a joy. I like that. Now for some bright yellow. Finally, we've moved away from those 
pinks and purples and no, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, see, when I push down real hard with that neon colored pencil, it does pretty good. But just to lightly color in an area, it's really blotchy, and you get worried. Is you know, if I when I burnish this, is this all going to be blotchy? But it, you know, it turns out all right. Um, yeah, now I get to get into the detail. I did their little faces. They're holding hands down there. You can't really see it. But they're actually holding hands. I really liked this picture when I saw it in a, I found it in, um, I believe, Pixabay or one of the royalty free photograph sites that you can, that you can go to. Um, so I found this picture in one of those. Um, and it just struck me now, I've, especially having lost my best friend Janine recently, like this, these two ladies, like, what are they up to? They're, they, they, are they having a slumber party? In my mind, it's, it's like me and Janine before a punk rock show and we would, I, we would get ready in her room and we would get all dolled up to go out and it was a lot of fun and we would spend a lot of time doing stuff like this and giggling. So we're just about done now. It's getting very, very close. I hope you enjoyed this process video. Hope everyone has a great day. Take care and uh, be safe out there.